In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I wish you could see what I see. <laughs> Our colleagues for today asks our almighty and everlasting God to increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity in order to obtain what God has promised and to make us love what has been commanded through all the efforts and teachings of Jesus. This collect shows us that we already possess these gifts of faith, hope, and charity, or better yet, Christian love, coming from Latin, caritas. How can there be an increase if we do not already have the seeds of these already within us? What do we do with these gifts we have been given? Do we just assume that we always have them? Are we always aware that they are a part of us? Do we consciously share these gifts or do we keep them to ourselves? Do they just pop out when we least expect them? Paul talked about these gifts in his first letter to the Corinthians, in which he tells them that the greatest of these is love. Again, are we willing to share these gifts with people outside our immediate circles of family and friends? In the reading from Jeremiah, we hear about the ending of that period of exile that was experienced by the people of Israel. It had been a time of great upheaval in the lives of those living in Jerusalem. They had been defeated, and their beloved city of Jerusalem had fallen to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. The walls that had offered great protection were torn down. People were killed, and the king's palace was destroyed. And worst of all, the temple was destroyed. Utter destruction on every account domestic, social, economic, and religious life for those who had lived there. Psychologically and spiritually, the people were greatly affected. And where was God in all of this? What had happened to the relationship between Israel and God? How could God's gifts of faith, hope, and love compete with all these terrible matters? Ah, then we hear today's passage from Jeremiah. The exile has ended. The people are on their way back home. In a few verses before today's reading, God says, You have made it through this time away from home, and you have found grace in the wilderness. Israel will be healed. God says, Go ahead and shout for joy and sing happy songs, people. I am going to round everyone up from the farthest parts of the earth. Everybody, even the blind and the lame, everyone will be saved and taken back home. The broken and damaged relationship with God will be healed, and the love of God will be felt again. Jump ahead to the days of Jesus and his disciples. Last week, we heard Jesus instructing the disciples to be servants of the Lord. Jesus had tried to prepare them for his journey to Jerusalem, the journey towards his own death and his rising again. So they have walked to Jericho, a city 20 miles northeast of Jerusalem. Again, Jesus and his disciples encounter a large crowd as they try to leave Jericho. And we meet a man Bartimaeus. Think back a moment to that rich young man we met a couple of weeks ago who seemed to have everything in his life. Money, food, a great house perhaps, maybe his own donkey to ride or to have a cart that took him from place to place. He seemed to have it all. Faith in the way he followed the Ten Commandments, hope that Jesus would give him what he asked for, and love of his life, but he could not give up the things he had when Jesus asked him to do this. So he walked away very sad. Now we have a blind beggar. Obviously he does not have the riches the young man had. 
as a beggar Bartimaeus would barely have had enough material to clothe himself. He probably would not have been pleasing to the eye or to the nose, and he was blind, just sitting by the dusty road outside of Jericho. How many people do you think passed him by as he sat in the dirt? How many eyes avoided his blind eyes? How many people looked at him with contempt? What a comparison these two make. The rich young man had run up to Jesus and knelt before him and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What boxes can I check off? What tasks can I merely do to get what I want? How often do we measure our actions in an attempt to make that goal, that quota, that deal? Bartimaeus shouts out to Jesus when he heard he was passing by. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many, now are the disciples part of this number, many sternly ordered Bartimaeus to be quiet. Can you hear them? Be quiet, fool. Don't you know who this is? Don't bother the Lord. Leave him be. Did these orders silence this blind beggar? Oh, no. Bartimaeus cried out even more loudly, so much so that Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. They called him and said, take heart, get up, he's calling you. This man who could not see but had the faith to believe in what he had heard about Jesus from sources we do not know, throws off his cloak and springs to his feet. He does not hesitate for a moment. What do the faces of those who tried to silence him look like? Are they ashamed? Are they disgusted? Are they chagrined or even envious? And what happened then? Does Bartimaeus stumble and lurch? Does he wave his arms wildly in front of him to keep his balance? We don't know how far he had to walk. We just know that he comes to Jesus. He comes to Jesus with faith and with hope. <coughs> Jesus then asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus replies, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus restores his sight at once. And this blind beggar with no wonderful material possessions, who did not proclaim to know all the commandments, suddenly regains his sight and follows Jesus on the way. It is his faith that heals him for this new journey. His gifts of faith, hope, and love were increased for him in the presence of Jesus. Blindness can mean more than physical sightlessness, right? We can be blind to so many things in our world. Wasn't the young rich man blinded by his need for material things? Was Bartimaeus physically blinded, or was his blindness a part of things that had happened to him in his life? Are we blind sometimes to things around us and we choose not to see them? What would we ask Jesus if we saw him on a street here in West Valley City? Our teacher, let us see again. Help us not to be blind to the needs of others in our society. Help us to see the brokenness around us and to help find ways to offer healing. Let us not wait for someone else to fix the problem or worse, ignore it. Our teacher, let us see again. Help us in this community of faith at St. Stephen's to reach out to the stranger in our midst, not only to those who first step through our doors, but maybe also to those who have gone unnoticed in our pews. Help us to see Christ in everyone we meet and to take seriously our words of dismissal at the end of worship. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Our teacher, let us see again. Help us to be present with those we love and with those we are about to meet. Help us to share our gifts of faith, hope, and love so that we may open new paths for people who want to join us 
on this incredible journey of following Jesus. The hope of the people that sprang up in the hearts and minds of the returning exiles from Babylon did not have an easy re-entry to their homeland. They fell into troubled times, but their gifts of faith, hope, and love kept them strong. Their renewed relationship with God kept them going through all the difficult times in their lives. Bartimaeus had endured hard times as a blind beggar. His gifts of faith, hope, and love were greatly increased when he understood Jesus was right there with him. With great courage, he cried out to Jesus, and he would not be shushed by those who thought they knew better. Jesus reached out to Bartimaeus and healed him. Bartimaeus then followed Jesus immediately. For how long did he travel all the way to Jerusalem and stay with the growing crowds of followers? We don't know. We do know his life was forever changed, however, and that his empowerment of these gifts, faith, hope, and love. Let us pray. O oh God, you call us from the roadside to see ourselves in you. Let us reach out to you with open hearts and minds. When our lives get difficult at times and our sight is not that clear, reveal the love of God to us as we follow you on our journey. Through Jesus Christ, the provider of our faith, hope, and love of God. Amen.